This is Seth David from the World Famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're doing another QuickBooks tutorial on how to recreate your QuickBooks company file. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings or consulting. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Is your QuickBooks file running slow? Is it taking a little while to run a report? You gotta sit there and wait. Or maybe it's just taking a few seconds between when you hit that save and close button and when you hear that little doot doot. That's kind of what it sounds like, isn't it? Doot doot. Anyway, I have a solution for you, as I always do. I've always got solutions for you, especially when it comes to QuickBooks and other productivity-based software for your small business. And one of the things we've done over the years for clients who run into the situation and here's when and why it can often happen you've got a company that's been in business for many many years you've used the same QuickBooks file for all those years and it's just accumulated a lot of data you've got lots of old customers you don't do business with anymore old vendors you don't do business with anymore accounts you set up years ago that you never use and lots and lots of transactions that just take up space and over time can accumulate and cause the file to run slow there's a few ways to fix this you can purge your data and there are services that you can send your company file to who will also condense your data even further than what the built-in uh, QuickBooks feature does and by the way that's here in the file menu <coughs> and you go to utilities and you go to condensed data and it walks you through uh, you know a wizard that where you can choose basically a cutoff date and other you know specify other information in terms of what information you'd like removed from your company file and that's one way to do it and you should certainly try that before going to any expense because that may solve your problem however this video is about what to do when even going to a service doesn't seem like it's going to help you don't want to condense your data basically what you want to be able to do is start clean with a brand new QuickBooks company file and you can do that pretty easily there's just a few steps that you need to take because what you'll have to do is first of all you're going to want to pick a clean cutoff date ideal time is to do it right at your year end. So if you're on a calendar, you're like most companies, then the ideal time would be to stick it out. I'm recording this, it's July 30th, 2012. Stick it out till the end of the year. Stick it out till December of 2012, and then plan on it ahead of time, such that right after the first of the year, you'll create a brand new QuickBooks company file and start entering all your new data into that file. So how do you do this? How do you get it set up? Well, what you're going to want to do is take the, company, the information from your existing company file. And you're going to need a few things. Basically, you're going to need to transfer the balance sheet. All your balances from the balance sheet need to get transferred into the new set of books. And then, of course, with that, you're going to want to take over whatever customers and vendors you do want to keep. And for that matter, your chart of accounts, assuming you don't want to start that all over again. So what do we do? And mind you, and this has just come up recently, and I've only learned about this because of my recent involvement with and working with uh, Doug Sleater at the Sleater Group, which is that if you use third-party applications with your existing QuickBooks company file, uh, it's, this is going to create problems if you do it this way, simply because those uh, third-party applications are looking for certain transaction ID numbers, which will be a sec uh, effectively reset with a brand new QuickBooks company file. So if you're using third-party applications before doing this, definitely contact them and find out if they're aware of that issue and if they've got a fix for it before doing something like this. Assuming that that's not an issue or you've gotten confirmation from them that they'll be able to sort of relink whatever transactions are needed or whatever associations need to be relinked into your file, then I'm going to show you what you do. First thing you want to do is run a trial balance report and that's going to be in your accountants, accountant and taxes menu here under reports. You run your trial balance and run it as of the cutoff date uh, for which you want to you know transfer the file so if it's December 31st you would just do this for this year or well by the time you're doing this it might actually be last year just make sure your dates are right. Okay so we do it for last fiscal year and what this does is it gives me the trial balance it essentially gives me the journal entry that I need to post onto the new set of books with the exception of the fact that I want to cut off I want to cut it off at the end of the balance sheet I don't need to book the uh, income statement into the new set of books but let me show you what this looks like we'll create a new worksheet Doo -doo -doo. there we go 
And let's just check our options here. This is just my personal stuff. You know that I like to get rid of. I don't want a space between the columns. I do want my headers on the printed report and the screen. Mainly I care about having it on the screen. I'm probably never going to print the report. Uh, don't need to show the grid lines. I'll decide where to freeze the panes. OK. And export. It's exporting. Exporting. Here we are. Now, there's a few things we have to talk about as we go through this. But first, let's just cut it off at the end of the balance sheet. Where's the end of the balance sheet? Well, the end of the equity accounts. So usually retained earnings is going to be the last one. So everything below that can go. Of course, notice here, I've got a nice balance trial balance. Once I do this, it's not going to be balanced, but the difference essentially is going to go into retained earnings because the difference is going to be the net effect of all of this income statement activity, which needs to get closed out to retained earnings anyway. So that's where this is all going to go. So when I delete these lines, I configure my difference that minus that is 83,760.14, which means actually that. Uh, I need to probably bring this over onto the other side. So sometimes the easiest thing to do is put that there. Make sure that my formulas here include the retained earnings line. It goes to 24. Yes, it does. 41.18.74. Put that in, and now my trial balance is balanced. So basically, we're just going to force retained earnings to uh, to work. And just so you know, I'm not crazy. So 83.760.14. Let's look at the profit and loss for last fiscal year in this company file. Last fiscal year. There is your loss of 83,760.14. So it is correct because that gets closed out to retained earnings, right? 83,760.14, which means I'm getting rid of what previously had been earnings that had accumulated in retained earnings. I'm getting rid of that. And now the net effect in retained earnings is that I have a cumulative loss that's showing up here of the 41.18.74. Just, just the difference of what was in here is accumulated earnings and the total loss for the current year. So total loss for the current year, in other words, wiped out all the prior accumulated earnings and put us into a loss uh, category here on the retained earnings. So hopefully I haven't completely confused you with that. But for those of you who have experience with this sort of thing and understand the trial balance really well, I wanted to make sure that you were clear on why and how this actually is correct and it does work. So now here's your journal entry. You're basically going to go into your new set of books and post this, but a couple of caveats here. Accounts receivable. I can't just post accounts receivable in there. Accounts payable. Same issue. Can't just post it in there. So we're going to pull these because these need to be dealt with separately. What I would do, however, just for the sake of this journal entry, is create a new and temporary account called Accounts Receivable Clearing and set it up as an other current asset. And same thing with Accounts Payable, other current liability. Don't set them up as actual Accounts Receivable and Accounts Payable accounts because the whole point is you're going to need to actually key in what makes these numbers up. I can't just put accounts payable in there, in other words, without actually associating it with a vendor. And I can't put accounts receivable in there without associating it with a customer. So I'm actually going to whatever's outstanding in these accounts, in effect, needs to be rekeyed. And I didn't mean to do that. Let's just copy this down. And accounts payable. I just want kind of a separate record here of what I had done there. So we're going to book the journal entry on the new books with these accounts. Checking account. In fact, might want to think about this for a minute because if I've got checks outstanding that haven't cleared the bank yet, this balance is already reduced for those checks. So if I use this number, I'm going to have a problem because I'm going to book this number, then the checks are going to uh, come in and clear. I'm going to record those checks again. I'm never quite going to balance. So when you're doing this kind of thing, this number here really needs to be whatever the actual balance per the bank account is as of the cutoff date. So if I'm doing this as of December 31st, I want to get my December bank statement and the checking account balance I want to put in there should be the uh, balance per bank as of December 31st. This way when the checks that I've written out of QuickBooks 
but which haven't cleared their bank yet, then come in and clear in January, my balance is accurate. And that, of course, is going to impact this number slightly. The effect of it is going to be that the, those checks, when I did this on an accrual basis, would have uh, affected my net income or loss. But since most of us are filing on a cash basis, this will effectively correct that anyway. So retained earnings will have to be offset. So if I have checks that haven't cleared the bank yet, but that were written in QuickBooks, then effectively I'm going to be increasing this balance and that's going to impact my retained earnings adjustment. So those are the, the few things that you need to be aware of when you're doing this. And of course, if you'd like, I'm available to help you. Just give me a call at 866-945-8070 and I can help you through this process. But basically this is your journal entry that you would post to start your new set of books. And from that point forward, you would simply start entering in your invoices and doing all of your transactions in your brand new set of books. Uh, the only other thing, of course, is that you will also need to decide uh, in terms of the lists. If you want to do an export of your lists, keep in mind you're going to export your customer list and your vendor list and probably your chart of accounts at the very least. If you've got employees that you're using for payroll, then your employee list goes as well. If you do it this way, using this export, you can click OK and then let me just save this to my desktop real quick and we'll call it uh, list export whatever you want to call it what will happen in your new set of books is you'll bring in those lists but there'll be no data tied to them so this is really the easiest way to do it go to utilities import double if files right and you'll import this list at that point you can go through because it still won't take up a lot of space because again there's no data tied to them but you can go through your customers and your vendors from there and eliminate any that you don't want to actually use in the new company file especially if they're old or before even doing this you can actually go to utilities do the condensed data and one of your choices in here as you go through this dialogue will be to um, remove any inactive vendors and customers. So you can do this process first, then do uh, you know, the process I just showed you. That's another way, just kind of trying to think of everything here in terms of how to make sure that you best utilize your time when you're doing what we call a QuickBooks file, a QuickBooks company file recreate, because that's what you're doing, you're recreating your company file. Again, if you need help, just reach out to me, Seth at nerdenterprises.com, 866-945 8070. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.